Hi, my name is David, and I try to play guitar. I'm not very good, as you can tell. One day, I saw a video of blues great Joe Bonamassa getting very technical about his guitar amplifiers. For guitar player, that guy really knows his stuff about amps. He inspired me to learn more. But to really understand guitar amps, you need to take them apart and put them back together. I watched hundreds of videos. I read all kinds of books. From Craigslist and eBay, I bought a used soldering iron, some old voltmeters, an ancient oscilloscope, and other test gear. Eventually, I built an entire electronics lab. Now, I guess I'm sort of an amp mechanic. I fix other electronics too, and this, well, this is my journey. I figured I'd share so others can learn too. I hope you like it, and just as a disclaimer, be sure to consult an expert before working with electricity. Hi, Dave the Amp Mechanic coming to you from my amp lab in Boston, Massachusetts. And today, we're gonna to take a little diversion and talk a little bit about lighting videos. Now, uh, I, of course, make these videos for fun. I don't make any money on the videos, and uh, I repair the amps that I repair for friends mostly, or I will find a broken amp and fix it and then resell it. But uh, the videos I really just do for fun. I also use these videos as a way to practice my trade craft of shooting videos because I do it professionally as well. Uh, I am the editor-in-chief of a website called Programmable Web, which is for web developers or people who use the web as a software development platform. And uh, when I shoot those videos, I actually shoot them uh, just a few feet away from where I'm sitting right now in a little makeshift studio that I've built. And in order for those videos to come out really nicely, I have to really work on the lighting of them. In fact, for any video to really come out nicely, you want to work on the lighting. What you can't see right now is I am pretty much surrounded by a couple really nice lights that are illuminating me here uh, and they're located behind the camera. There's two of them actually. So uh, one of the things I do though with these videos, the, the amp mechanic videos, is that you know we're in the vintage lab here. Everything that I use to fix these amplifiers, it's, I do it, I take a completely vintage approach. And I want the lighting to be a little warmer than for my professional videos, which are, are just of a completely different kind, right? Uh, there's something about, you know, these lights up here, these are old gas station lights, and, you know, just keeping a little bit of that warmth going. So, uh, I thought I would share with you how it is I build my own video light panels to light the professional studio. Now, for my professional video studio over there, I've got a couple LED light panels that were purchased on Amazon. Relative to the old days when you used Omni lights from Lowell to light videos, uh, in fact, that's what I'm using to light this video right now, uh, they're pretty inexpensive. But they're still quite a bit of out of out of pocket expense to the amateur videographer. And so one way to overcome that expense is to actually build your own LED lights. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. It's relatively simple. It's a quick video here. And uh, we start, for example, with a strip of LED lights that you can buy on Amazon. Now, the killer here is, is that the uh, LED lights that were purchased for Amazon were probably something like about, uh, I think, $70 each. And uh, they don't even work that well, quite frankly. One of them has got a little bit of a flashing problem and I have to send it back. Uh, meanwhile, if you make your own light panel with these, they can be pretty reliable. And on top of that, if you use some spare scrap parts that you find laying around your house or just even go and buy some of that stuff, the total cost is going to be very inexpensive. In my case, uh, I think my out-of-pocket -po expense was about $15 for a huge light panel. And uh, here it is, I'm showing you that light panel in action right now. And uh, that light panel was made from uh, one of these and then just a bunch of scraps, some scrap aluminum, uh, some scrap wood, uh, some scrap wires that I had around the lab. Uh, if you had to buy some of that scrap stuff, eh, you know, it probably cost you another 10 or $15. $30 is not bad for a big light like this. Now, some people may have to buy their own power supply 
and that might be a little added extra expense in my case over the last i don't know 10 15 years whenever i have had to get rid of uh some electronic device like a computer or something like that uh, speakers that needed one of those power supplies i kept the power supply thinking who knows, I might need it in the future uh, in the event of some other power supply goes bad. So now I have a collection of those things, a big collection, and uh, some of them are coming in handy for these lights. So let's get to the part of building the light so you can see how I did it. Now the first thing I did was I took a big piece of plywood that I had laying around and I cut it up into three equal pieces that I thought would make a good size for a light panel, for three light panels that is. And then the next thing I did was I got some aluminum that I had laying around the house, like aluminum chi thing, and it was very thin and easy to cut with just a pair of scissors, and I cut the aluminum up to match uh, the, the, the different pieces of plywood that I had. Um, again, all the same size, so I cut all the aluminum to the same size. Now the reason I did that was for two reasons actually. One. I wanted the reflective uh, property of the aluminum so that any light that was on the light panel would uh, definitely shine towards whatever I was pointing the light panel at. And the other reason I did it was for heat dissipation. Um, I really didn't know how much heat these lights give off. Uh, all I knew was that uh, lights get hot. Uh, and so I thought, well, in the event that I need a little bit of heat dissipation, this will help dissipate the heat. Now, if you take that aluminum sheet and you put it flat on the piece of plywood, there still needs to be a way for that heat to vent, right? So then what I did was I took a regular drill uh, with a one and a half inch drill bit and I drilled a whole mess of holes in the plywood as a way for the heat to escape uh, from the aluminum. Quite frankly, as it turned out, I discovered that these things run really cool and you probably don't even need to drill the holes. But I've got them there and no harm in having them, so uh, that's what I did. The, the next thing I did was I took the, uh, the strip of these and um, you know it comes in one strip, so I'll, I'll kind of take it out here so you can see what it looks like. And uh, it kind of looks like that. Maybe you can see that. And uh, I just basically, I cut the, um, uh, I'm sorry, I left one end on, and then uh, I cut, I cut them, I, I kind of stretched them across the aluminum to make sure that I was cutting strips that were about the size of the length of the aluminum. And then I just cut a bunch of equal sized pieces. And, uh, and after that, I took the adhesive backing off. These have adhesive backing on them and I um, uh, just applied them to the aluminum. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you're lighting videos uh, you, and you're building these light panels, you kind of want to figure out what light intensity and brightness you're going to use. For example, like I said, th these lights are a little bit warmer than I'm using here. Uh, you might want daylight um, uh, LEDs, you, which are much brighter. You might want uh, warmer lights like this. And so when you buy the lights, you have to look at the specifications on the uh, back of the box or when you're looking at Amazon, read what it says. It'll tell you what the LED uh, type is. Um, it's sort of like the same thing as white balance in your camera. Um, and you're going to want to white balance your cameras against this light anyway. So whatever light you pick, make sure you white balance your cameras for them. Now, for daylight lighting, uh, you want roughly uh, 5,500 uh, in there. Um, that's, that's the rating of your daylight LEDs, daylight lights. And uh, when you white balance, your camera, it might even tell you, hey, I, I'm detecting about 5,500, 5,600. So um, what I bought here were the uh, 5050. It was the closest I could get to 5,500, uh, good enough. And um, then you also uh, you know, want to look at um, how many you get. And in this case, you get about, uh, you get 300 LEDs. Uh, so, and the length of this one is 
uh, let's see, I think the length of this one was something like five meters. Yes, five meters. I don't know if you can see that right there. It says five meters. So anyway, um, you want to be careful about what you get. If you, want to, if you want something that's a little bit warmer, you want like these lights, you probably want something in like the 3800 range. Um, when I white balanced these lights uh, with my camera, it told me that it was detecting roughly 3800. When you go to like Home Depot and buy LED light bulbs, they'll show you the different light bulbs that they have in a little test box. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's right, you know, in the light bulb section. And you can see that the light bulbs are rated also for these different ratings. And so you may want to put some of those bulbs around you uh, and uh, to light your, your backdrops or to light yourself. So the trick to setting up the strips and then soldering them together is pretty straightforward. First of all, you need to cut the strips in the right place. I may have failed to mention that earlier, and that's very important. And all you have to do is look very closely at the strips and it will show you where you can make the cuts. When you're making those cuts, make them as accurately as you possibly can. And the reason I say that is because you want as much surface there to lay some solder down as you possibly can. Uh, if you miss in either direction, uh, then you're reducing the amount of uh, surface area that the uh, solder can be applied to. Now, once I had the strips cut up and pasted down onto the aluminum surface, the next thing that you need to do is, is pretty straightforward. You cut a bunch of little pieces of, of wire up uh, and you can see I've got a little pile of wire here. I basically uh, used, you know, one color for uh, the positive and one color for the common. And then uh, all you really have to do is solder uh, all the uh, common leads to each other at the end of the strips and then all the positive leads. It's marked pretty straightforward. And so from one strip to the next, you just solder up the negatives. And then from one strip to the next, you solder up the positives. And what's really cool about this is that you don't necessarily have to do it the way I did it, which is I did the uh, negatives on one end of the strip and the positives on the other. All you have to do is get, a, get it on either end uh, and, uh, and you're good to go. So, you know, in my example, um, you know, you take the, the wire that, as it comes from the manufacturer and uh, one end of that uh, strip has the uh, connector for your power source, right? So you just leave that on there. And from there, you can just um, hop on down the line and solder them up. Now, I, I used one end of the strip for the, the, uh, um, for the hot lead and one for the common, mainly just to, uh, you know, keep the wires from getting all tangled up with each other. But you don't have to do it that way. Um, like I said, all you have to do is, uh, get it no matter how you get it just get it uh and and you're off to the races now what i did was after i had my strips down and i had my plan worked out for how i was going to, going to attach each strip to each other uh to the other ones i um i tinned the the little copper spot there where at, at the end of the strip so i, I went and i tinned all the uh, strips uh, and then once the strips were tinned then I tinned the wires, uh, and then it made it a real sense just to kind of uh, hook them all up and uh, solder them down. And that was it. I mean, it was really straightforward from there. Then the next thing I did was, you know, I went through my power supplies and looked for the best possible power supply that I could find. Now, in terms of picking a power supply for your newly built light panel, uh, it's relatively simple to either buy one or pick one from a stash that you might have, like the stash that I have. First, you have to look on the packaging for the light strip you, you purchased and double check to see what it says in the way of power requirements. Now I'm looking at mine and it says that the uh, working voltage is 12 volts DC and the wattage is 18 watts. So that's telling you about half the information you need to know, which is that you need a power supply that's capable of 12 volts. But what you also need to know is 
what the average rating of that power supply should be. And that's relatively easy to figure out because all you have to do is divide the watts by the volts and it gives you some idea of the number of amps that you, are, that, that you need. And in this case, we take 18 divided by 12 and we get one and a half amps. And so when I went through my stash of power supplies, I actually found three power supplies that were in the neighborhood and looked like they would do the job. So I went ahead and uh, pulled those three out uh, one of them will support my newly built light panel and the other two will be used for my other light panels. But what you need to do is you need to look on the power supply itself because it'll tell you the information you need. It'll tell you, for example, what the input voltage rating is, uh, probably say like 120 volts AC, and then it'll tell you what the output is. That will be in this case 12 volts DC. And it will tell you uh, what the power supply is rated for in terms of amperage. And so uh, once you find uh, some power supply that match then you're pretty much off to the races uh, I took one of my power supplies plugged it into my newly built light panel and voila I had amazing light um, and then of course I went and I got a fitting to put on the back of the light panel uh, that attaches to any standard light stand. I bought that at B&H Photo. Uh, I believe it cost me somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, $11. I didn't really need that, but uh, for my specific application, which was to light not only uh, my uh, torso and my face up, but also to throw some more light on the backdrop, uh, this, uh, the light stand I had is up in the air and, ne and I needed a way to mount the new light panel to that stand. So uh, that created an amazing light for the fraction of a cost uh, uh, of the same kind of light if you were to purchase one out there. Now one last thing you want to do when you build lights like this is you probably don't want the LEDs shining on you directly. It'll be too bright. So the way I solve that problem is you want to diffuse the light with something that's really good at diffusing light. You could go out and buy gels from places like B&H Photo for a ton of money. Uh, I think like eight, nine dollars just for a little 24 inch by 24 inch sheet, which is barely enough to cover one light. In my case, uh, I learned of a trick that uh, is way less expensive. What you do is you go to Ikea's website, you buy the Shottis Pleated Shade. It's a white shade that's partially translucent. It's designed to let sunlight through. And it comes in a six foot by three foot size for $4. You bring that back to your studio and then you cut it to size and you fit the newly pieces, newly cut pieces of pleated shade over your lights. And now you have great, amazing diffusers for $4. You can imagine the number of diffusers you'll get out of a sheet that's six feet by three feet. So there you have it. Now I've got a great light panel with a diffuser with a diffuser on it. I spent hardly any money on it. I'm going to build a couple more and uh, I'll have all the lights I need for my lab. And I did it at a, a mere fraction of the cost that it would have taken to buy brand new lights uh, anywhere on the web or wherever you go. So uh, if you have questions or whatever, leave them uh, below the uh, the video here. Otherwise, uh, you know, have fun building one of these yourself and uh, I'll see you at the next video. From Boston, Massachusetts, I'm Dave the Ant Mechanic. I hope you had fun. Thank you.